and welcome to Mindset, an HCD vidcast, where we dive into the world of applied consumer neuroscience and market research with leading experts in the field. My name is Michelle Nigella, PhD in behavioral neuroscience and director of research and innovation at HCD. And I'm Catherine Ambrose, the manager of behavioral and marketing sciences with HCD. As your hosts, we are going to act as the buzzkills for the buzzwords, taking time to critically think about the limitations and pitfalls of emerging trends and topics within the field to help you identify what innovation has a lot of untapped potential or is too good to be true. Now, HCD is a full service research house which provides research capabilities on consumers by looking at how they perceive, evaluate, and respond to different types of stimuli, such as looking at product experiences, communications, or just general consumer and shopper experiences. We use a combination of tools that come from psychology, physiology, neuroscience, as well as the traditional methods that people typically use to see how they experience different stimuli. That stimuli can range from the early stages of exploration all the way through the final product validation tests. This is what we refer to as applied consumer neuroscience. So stick around for more curious conversations as we chat our way through the ever evolving space of consumer science. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mindset Podcast slash Vidcast. You are joined by Catherine Ambrose and our great co-host, Michelle Nagella. Michelle. And, Hi. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we are very excited today. We have a guest with us that is someone who's been with HCD for a few months now, kind of interning and helping us with some internal projects that we've been working on. So we wanted to talk about her experiences with HCD and why she was spending so much time with us these past few months. And uh, it's Bingling Wang. Wang. So Bingling, can you introduce yourself, share who you are, what you're doing with us on this podcast? <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Bingling, and uh, I'm currently um, a student in the Master of Behavioral Decision Science program at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I was able to work with HCD in this internship because of my capstone project. Um, uh, I'm glad that in HCD is like was able to offer this internship opportunity for me to finish my capstone so I can graduate. <laughs> and then um, uh, I was able to work on something I'm interested in, um, like shopper's perceptions and design a pilot study. Very cool. So tell me, uh, you know, let's figure out your origin story. Um, so you are in the program, the Masters of Decision, Decision Sciences um, and Behavior at UPenn. Can you tell us how you decided to pursue your Masters in Decision Science? Yeah, um, so when I was an undergrad at William and Mary, um, I majored in psychology and economics. And then I think it's my third year, I took a class called Judgment and Decision Making. And then I got introduced to the book, Thinking Fast and Slow. That's where I know, oh, there is a field called, uh, you know, behavioral economics. Then I figured that um, since most of my studies come from the academic um, perspective, I'd like to, you know, know more about how behavioral science can be applied in real world. And that's um, why I got interested in the MBDS program, where um, I can learn more about its application in different fields. Yep. And, so um, mm hmm you're finishing up the program right now, right? So how long have you been in the program? It's a year and a half now because of COVID. It was yeah. supposed to be one year. Yeah. Okay. So, so did you have a favorite class or a favorite thing that you did? Yeah. Um, one class I really like is behavioral public policy because in that class, we touched on a lot of the um, applications um, of behavioral sciences in for example, health um, or in consumer behavior. And that's why I, I, I got very interested in consumer decision-making mm. and um, want to continue on that path. Yeah. 
That's awesome. And do you feel like there was any, um, any, I know Michelle was talking about the classes, but were there any projects within the classes or group projects that you felt really, uh, you were like, wow, this is eye opening. This is something I didn't realize people were using behavioral science in to try to tackle these issues. Um, this is a pretty classic one, but I didn't know it before I took behavioral public policy is studying um, people's um, electricity use uh, using behavioral science as an intervention. Mm. Um, I don't remember the exact name of the paper, but basically it's about giving them electronic electricity bills that have different messages and then it can nudge them to save more electricity. And this is something I didn't think about which is like, you know, a cheap tool to um, use, but then very helpful. So that's- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I, I'm also in the program right now. So we've been in some of the same classes and something that I've really appreciated is the fact that we did it this past year and a half, like you were saying, COVID is the biggest disruptor that- the world has really seen in quite some time. So <clears throat> behavioral science is really all over the place right now, whether it comes to, you know, vaccines or masks mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Totally we can, agree. yeah, we can take what it, we are learning in the classroom and see it in action every mm -hmm. single day from, you know, and I what think we've been exploring. A lot of those things you can see almost most more clearly than you would have before, because so many of the changes were things that probably would have gradually happened over time, but because of such a large interrupter, I think you're seeing them faster, right? So maybe like the changes with people's media viewing habits, or, you know, maybe some of the shopping insights that you can get now, now that people are shopping more online. Um, I think there are just huge changes that, um, you know, you probably wouldn't see so like starkly, I guess is what I'm thinking. Absolutely. And so Bingling, you were kind of touching on to finish up your experience to get a really cumulative understanding of everything that you've done so far. It takes us to this capstone, right? So take us for through, because I know that the way that Penn has it set up is that it's kind of a, a selection process on both sides. So what interested you in what HCD had to offer? I uh, actually pulled up our prompt that we had. And it's funny because <laughs> when I was looking at it, it's, it's literally quite simple. It was a consumer study exploring a novel survey tool. So what about that intrigued you? Yeah. So Actually, HCD was my top choice, so I'm glad <laughs> I got in. Um, the I think the two keywords kind of stood out to me um, it was shopper's perceptions and to design a pilot study. Um, for the first one, shopper's perceptions, because I'm interested in consumer decision-making mm -hmm. and um, shopping in the stores is a large part of, you know, what consumers do every day. Um, it's, yeah, just an interesting topic to me. And then designing a pilot study, um, I like to be creative sometimes. I think it's a um, good opportunity for me to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, so that's how <laughs> I got interested. Yeah, this was a unique one um, in comparison to some other intern projects we've done and capstone projects we've done with, with students in your program because it really you know, was ground up, right? So normally we have a research topic and people just run a quick study, but this was different because we were innovating, right? Yeah. Which is, I think something that, you know, a lot of people were doing, again, thinking about, you know, paradigm shifts and um, making things work to make research happen during COVID. And for us, the thing that came up was trying to change the way we look at shopper insights, right? Because so often I think we have people come into a central location. Uh, maybe we do a shelf test with a mock shelf or a mock store, um, or we have people do things online. Uh, but something that I think is, you know, two things I think that have really come to my mind to be interesting to examine further was the idea of context, right? So that, cause so many clients come to us and they ask about doing things uh, in a natural environment, which is of course very difficult to do, right? Um, but everybody wants natural environment cause they want people to be experiencing something in context because that certainly changes your decision-making 
right? Whether you're in a central location or whether you're actually at a real store. And then the other side was just thinking how people shop now, right? So, so often we, uh, we're in a digital world, you know, we're in the metaverse, right? Where we are interacting with screens all around us, whether it is, you know, our phone or our watches, or, you know, a lot of people say that some stores are like the showroom for Amazon. So we go and we, we look at the product in the store and then we actually end up buying it on Amazon at a totally different location. Um, <clears throat> so really bringing those ideas together, a digital form of doing mobile form of doing research, also thinking about in context had us thinking about AR, right? So could you maybe tell us a little bit about what you did? Sure. So um, I used a pilot study to kind of test and validate the augmented reality tool that HCD has already developed. And then um, the study question I asked is how does the shopping environment impact shoppers in context perceptions of the stores and products? Um, I guess we kind of landed on this topic pretty quickly because we we're all interested in it. And it, the topic is also pretty intuitive to interpret. And so it allows me to better reflect on the use of um, the AR tool. Um, about the design, um, the participants will go to two stores, Target and Walmart, to do um, the survey. And then um, they'll first go to the store entrance um, and rate their feeling about the store. And then they'll go find three products in the store and read their feelings about each product. And then they'll go back to the entrance store and read their feeling about the store again. It's um, probably good to step in there a little bit and think about how people were doing that, right? So when they went in, you know, they were using their phones, right? And they were able to look at the store through their camera and their feelings were taken through a psychological test called self-assessment mannequin, which is, you know, the nonverbal pictorial scale for um, emotional valence, arousal, and um, control, right? So you get this sort of three-dimensional look at their emotional reaction to whatever they're experiencing. In this case, they're experiencing the environment around them, which is the front of the store or the product itself. Um, so the idea was to get that in the moment feeling and then also ask some questions, right? Right. And I would want to step in here as well and say, Bingling, can you just explain a bit for maybe a, a listener that doesn't know, how was this an augmented reality tool? What part of this was augmented? Yeah. So as Michelle said, um, people need to have their camera on and then look um, through the camera for five seconds. Uh, let me rephrase that. Um, uh, participants need to aim their camera to the product or the store and then look through the camera to view the store or the product for five seconds and then um, rate their feelings while they're um, looking at their camera. So it's in context because uh, it's not two separate steps for them to you know look at the product and then think about how they feel about it, but doing it at the same time um, to make it in the moment. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I thought it was so interesting because Whenever people hear AR, they think Pokemon Go. And that's when, <laughs> you know, there is an object being augmented into somebody's environment. But what we actually did with our tool is that we augmented the survey question that we were asking or the scale that we were asking. So their environment actually stayed the same. It was just how they were evaluating the environment is what we were playing around with, which was really, really awesome and mm -hmm. fun to do, honestly. <laughs> and I really got to credit um, our own um, development team. Uh, so really giving credit to Pat, who did a lot of work on the programming, um, but also Bill when, so I came to them with this idea like a year ago and said, hey, wouldn't it be interesting if we did this? And they were like, yeah, that's actually doable. <laughs> um, and so it really was. And that that's, you know, that's, I think the fun of working at HCD is that you can have some crazy random idea and, and we can make it happen. Um, and being able to work with you, Bingling, was to make it come to life. Right. So, you know, for us, the goal was to see, can this even be used? Is it worthwhile to use? Uh, and I really like that you were able to add to that 
not only can it be done, but what kind of insights can we get into the shopper experience? So what did you find? Yeah, um, uh, it's, there are a lot of findings. <laughs> so <laughs> our first day, because our um, sample size is pretty small, we mainly focus on directional results. And then um, first a few findings um, come from comparing perceptions between stores and between um, pre and post shopping experiences of the participants. Then um, we found that um, shoppers' emotional states went downward after shopping, and people general felt, generally felt more positively um, about Target than Walmart. So I think, you know, just kind of teasing that apart. So the shopping experience was kind of negative in general, right? It is. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, maybe that is because we had them hunting for these different things potentially, but I do find it really interesting that there were differences in the sort of emotional experience people had between the sto two stores. So what you're saying is that it was more pleasant emotionally at Target than it was at Walmart. Yep. Yeah. And I, the second thing that I thought was really interesting about your findings is how the emotional experience that people have in stores actually affects their behavior. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, uh, it's interesting how emotional dimensions can interact with one another across time. So for example, if um, a person, we found out that if a person feel more excited about a store, um, the person will tend to feel less excited about the product, mm -hmm. but more in control about the product. Mm -hmm. um, this is an interesting point because how the store present the products could influence how, you know, uh, people see the products itself in different dimensions. Yeah. Um, that's something to worth looking into, um, you know, both for brands and for retailers. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when we think about positioning on shelves or end caps or display cases, things of that sort. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, kind of like what we were talking about, the theme of this is really understanding the context. So if we are able to recognize that there's something about the environment or there's something about this whole shopper experience that leaves the person changed from the way that they started versus the way that they ended, we can look at the different variables that, and there are quite a lot, obviously, when you're in a shopping environment, there's so many different variables that change, but we can, you know, dive into those a little bit and give yep. some diagnostic advice to, you know, say you were speaking to Walmart or Target and mm -hmm. say, look, like these are things that you want to keep in mind because it's affecting the way that the whole experience is being perceived. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And so what do you think in terms of, cause part of this too, was a learning process. As we've said, it's a pilot study. Where do you see this being utilized in the future? I know that we've toyed around a lot with the context situation. So a home use test, for example, would be a really great place that we could potentially put this in another study or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on where we could go from here? Yeah, um, uh, the most intuitive uh, path for me is to test things that can only happen in the moment, like mm -hmm. smell or music. Um, something that matters, but it's hard to tell how much if we're, you know, just doing it online and it's not in context. Mm. Yeah. I also thought, um, you know, going out of the, the shopper realm and going more towards customer experience for services, you know, whether it's in a restaurant or getting your oil changed or at a hospital, any of those sort of settings where you might um, do customer ratings of their experience, service ratings, um, that it's really hard when you get that email like two days later and you're supposed to recall like what happened. But if you were to do it in the moment while you're there in the store, pushed a notification uh, and, you know, just ran through a very quick emotional survey of some sort and a behavioral survey, um, there could be some really interesting findings there as well. Absolutely. And, you know, what's really great too is this is so in the moment that sometimes even when you're doing a shop along, you're taking that person out of the experience by just 
speaking to them and you, you brought up fast and slow earlier in our conversation. It is quite a, as soon as that person's thinking about it, they're, you know, they're really, um, out of whatever they were just experiencing. So by, by being able to make it a little bit more intuitive with something like a device, like a cell phone, that is yeah. basically a third arm to some people at this point. <laughs> it's natural behavior. It's at natural. This point. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really integrates into their habit because they're already comparing prices and everything on their phone. They're taking pictures of things no matter where they are, you know? So I think it, it's easily integrated. So um, I think that this was a really good project and I hope that you had fun on it as well. Definitely. It's what very- do you think you learned from it? You yeah. personally. First of all, um, it's my first internship in behavioral science. So I kind of understand more how, you know, behavioral science tools can be, you know, implemented in market research. Um, second of all, it's an innovative um, study. Um, it allows me to think more about, you know, future development and the larger pictures instead of just focusing on the smaller details, which is something um, I'm like, I seldom do uh, on myself. And thirdly, uh, I really enjoy the um, environment at HCD. It's very welcoming and supportive. Um, yeah, and we did it, not pay you to say that. <laughs> no, you didn't. I just want to add that. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and I can, you know, kind of really um, express my thoughts and get feedback from you guys. It's a uh, very helpful environment. <laughs> Well, we really enjoyed having you along. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. It was a it was a learning process for both of us because, like we were saying earlier, this is a brand new, innovative pro- pro- uh, product and project that we were working on. Mm-hmm. So it was really fun to be able to pinpoint and like <laughs> ping pong ideas back and forth yeah. with each other. Uh, yeah, it's really teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, then, you're going to be going forth, right? And you're moving on to the next stage now that you are graduating. So yay, congratulations. Um, <laughs> so what sort of, uh, what are you looking forward to? What are you doing now? Yeah, so I like to continue with um, consumer research with behavioral science. And uh, I'd like to learn more about how behavioral science has been and can be used in consumer research. Um, I'm currently, well, finding a job um, in market research, hoping, you know, there's some opportunity for me to apply behavioral science tools. And the other thing, it's kind of inspired by this um, experience is I got more interested in user experience Mm -hmm. um, since um, this, you know, the Development of the surveys, the whole process made me think, you know, what design can grab users' attention and convey concise information efficiently. Uh So it's something related to user experience, I think. It's pretty interesting. So I'm going to look more into that. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I can definitely see that. I think that that's a really good spot for decision sciences, right? Because um, you know, all the things when they're, when they're laid out together in a website or in a product or whatever it might be, um, they can drive things one way or another, right. For the good or bad. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that there, what's really wonderful about behavioral science is even if the job isn't quote unquote behavioral scientist, you can take it and whatever you've learned from it and apply it to so many roles. And so mm-hmm. wherever you go, you're going to be able to take your learnings and go forward with them and expand on them. And, you know, I, I think that's one of the most important parts and most attractive parts of, of our degree that we were in the process of getting you're closer than I am. <laughs> um, but, but um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting and um, we're excited to see where you're going to end up and, you know, what the future holds. Um, of course, of course. So we do have a segment we want to play with you. It is the game called react attack, where we're going to be listing off random words to you. And basically you just share the first thing that comes to your mind. It's basically this rapid fire word association. Yes, exactly. So I have the 10 words for you. You can't get it wrong. There's no way to lose, but I just want to make sure, are you ready to start the game? Just say the first word that comes to the top of your mind when you hear Catherine say her word. 
Okay. Just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, get it over with. <laughs> All right. So there's 10 words. Ready? So the first word, education. Education. Um, I would say it's the word that came to mind is important. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's like, that's good. Um, something I think has value in it. Um, not just the title, but also, you know, the process itself, how mm-hmm. a person grow and learn, um, more, learn things more critically. It's, um, an important process. We're going to take important as your first reaction <laughs> word. Exactly. All right. So just one word, just rapid fire. Go. There we go. Second word, target. Walmart. <laughs> 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 Yogurt. Oh no, it's Nusa. <laughs> Nusa. Nusa. <laughs> For those listening, that's the one we tested. <laughs> All right, graduation. Coming soon. <laughs> All right, AR. AR. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, iPhone. iPhone. Um, it's um cold bugs because of cat <laughs> <laughs> yes for listeners just to explain we did have some coding bugs trying to make this work on iPhones yeah it was an adventure <laughs> pokemon go pokemon go um ibu um it's the i i thought about it because my roommate's cat had the same name so <sighs> <laughs> that's so funny um context context hmm shopping it's just connected yeah <laughs> exactly stores stores products mm, okay and then i believe this is your last one final one drum roll please <laughs> research research valuable that's a great way to end it <laughs> i love good. that thank you so much for playing the game with us it's yeah, a lot sure. of fun to, to hear what what everyone's first reactions are yeah so, <laughs> you know i thought it was really fun working with you Ling. so i know that we're going to continue to work together in some capacity as we all move forward um but thank you so much for for joining us both today and uh for this um internship i think it was really great it really helped us out uh we love working with students at upenn and we've really enjoyed this this past semester with you Thank you. I really had a great time at HCD. And Bingling, for the people that are listening and think you're so cool and want to talk to you a little bit more, where can they find you online? You you should find me on LinkedIn. Um, Just search my name and yeah, just connect me on LinkedIn and I reply. Awesome. Awesome. And what we're going to do is have your LinkedIn in the show notes. So for anybody that wants to connect with her, learn a little bit more about the project, you can either reach out to Bingling or Michelle or myself, and we'd be more than happy to chat about it a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And for all you listeners, thank you for for joining us once again. Please uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, reach out to us on all our different uh, ways of reaching out to us, Twitter, website, email. We love it all. Uh, Interact with us and we will catch you next time. HCD Mindset is produced by Helen Ross. For more information or updates, follow HCD Research on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at HCD Research Inc. and at HCD Neuroscience. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to rate, review, and follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you and stay tuned for more curious conversations.